everyone. Thanks for joining our NSC information session today. Thanks everyone online who's also joining us. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. We have to let Mark bring that as well. Um, my name is Anna, and I'm the Assistant Director for Center for Global Engagement and NSC Coordinator here on campus. Um, today, I'm going to kind of go through what um, the National Student Exchange is, how it works here at MSU, and then we have um, Saki Ha, who's going to talk about his experience. He got back from exchange last semester. And then I also have some information who are students currently on exchange in Mississippi. And so she wrote a quick paragraph that she wanted me to share with all of you about her experience that she's currently on now through her academic hearing. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so the National Student Exchange. So the um I got it. So National Student Exchange is a um, consortium of about 170 schools um here in the US, um, including schools in Puerto Rico, Guam, Virgin Islands, um, and also schools in Canada. Um, 49 of the 50 states um have at least one school who is an NSC consortium member. Um NSC was actually started actually in the 1960s. Um uh, with three different schools to increase um, culture exchange throughout different parts of the US, student civil rights movement. And from there, it has grown into a way for students to um, further create connections um, throughout the US um, and in Canada. So, um, a center of global engagement here, uh, we work with um, students for programs not only domestically, but also internationally for short term programs and happily led, through semester programs, and through summer as well. Today, we'll just focus on our domestic programs because those are the programs we're able to send students on right now due to the current travel restrictions we have due to COVID. So but if you're interested in programs outside the U.S. as well, feel free to contact your office. Um, we'll look at students, um, make sure programs are accessible, um, they can fit in students' graduation packages, and also academic value is really important for some of all of our programs. Um, so specifically with NSC. Um, so as you can see, um, Programs can really vary by kind of options. So because NSC is so broad and there's over 170 schools, basically every school, there is a pro primary program for every major. So if you're a student who wants to get more into a specific niche that maybe you, we don't especially have classes here at um, MSU, NSC is a chance that maybe you find another school through in the US that has those options. Or if you want, um, Look at a school that has the same accreditation for business or engineering, social work, those kind of options um, throughout the US and different schools that can have those too. Well, I, can, I guess I'll kind of read a little bit about the students now. Um, we have a student named Holly. She's actually currently in Mississippi doing a full year exchange. And she came here in Mankato um, as an earth science and geography student. And she's really interested in meteorology and broadcast meteorology. Um, and so she's able to use NSD. Um, at the University of um, Mississippi State University to um, get those classes to for grad school and to kind of explore her options. So she kind of wrote, the first time I heard about NSC my sophomore year, I knew it was too good an opportunity to pass up. This exchange has impacted my academic career in literally the best possible way. Um, she taking unique classes like broadcasting and meteorology, which she don't have at MSU. She also explained other part of the US that she hadn't seen before. Um, she had such a positive experience that she strongly recommends it to anyone who has the opportunity and definitely those who want to test the waters and escape the cold of uh, Minnesota winters. Mm -hmm. um, so there's different options for students um, through programs that are um, warm locations, cold locations. What's really cool about NSC2 is if you were someone who really wants to go to a specific program, like um, marine biology or wilderness areas, or areas like social justice. Some schools have specific core programs where you can enroll those specific semester. For instance, um, a couple of schools in Montana actually have wilderness survival um, like semester that you can actually earn those certificates and take classes and actually be in the field like the entire semester. So a lot of these options allow you to gain additional field work um, experience as well. So, the school of NSC is actually two different ways this is really affordable for students. Um, well, two options are called home pay and host pay. 
home pay is for students. Um, a lot of our schools have options. Well, you pay MSU tuition and you pay room and board at the university um, that you're going to. So sometimes it's very small cost here. Um, also, we allow students to do something called host pay, um, meaning you would actually pay in state tuition at the university you're going to. So you wouldn't pay tuition here, you would just pay in state tuition at that school. And then you pay room for there as well, but you still would be able to use your financial aid package that awarded here at Mankato. Mm -hmm. So some schools have similar tuition to ours, less, a little more, but it offers even more ability for placement for students as well. So what's really cool about NSC is you can really kind of explore different types of universities. So if you want to go to a larger city, a smaller school. I'm going to focus on students who want to have even a different demographic experience. Um, NSC has um, connections with universities that are still by college and universities, HBCUs. Um, there's actually about eight of them who are currently a part of um, NSC, both in the Virgin Islands, all part of the U.S., um, school, schools that are Hispanic-serving institutions, um, all the universities in Puerto Rico, some parts of the southern um, West U.S., as long as we're schools that are in the city. So you're Asian American, Native American, Pacific Islander serving institutions. There's schools like those in different parts of California, Hawaii, and then parts of um, the Pacific Northwest. So students can kind of figure out what would best for them academically, um, both um, campus-wise, academic-wise. So when we're going to students, you have options to do placements at the placement conference every year, which then that's coming up to be up with that, or through all the full year doing course camp placement. So it really is an opportunity for students to kind of work this in when they it would be best for them um, personally and academically. So now we're gonna have Masaki come and talk a little bit um, about his experience. Um, I think we have a missing slide here. We're not here yet. Um, or um, Mataki, if you want to come up and you can talk all about your experience last fall at the University of Alaska Southeast. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for coming today. My name is Masaki Tara and from Japan, and I'm studying zoology. And I enrolled in honors program at MNSU. And I joined National Student Exchange Program last semester and studied marine biology. So yeah, I introduce my experiences today. So I introduce about myself today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my hometown is Minami and state name is Fukushima, but they are a small town and population is 6,000. There are many old people and many <laughs> wild animals like monkeys, wild boars. So nothing to do that. It will be boring place. <laughs> and I played baseball and I was a first baseman. Yeah. And I really love animals and especially fish. So when I was a kid, I go to pond and river and capture fish, gray fish and turtles and all the every day. And my favorite things is uh, outdoor activities, especially fishing and kayaking. And yeah, my dream is to be fish researcher. Okay, so I use National Student Exchange Program last semester and go to University of Alaska Southeast. And in general, there are many well, so that's why mascot is well. That is really here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Okay, so why did I decide to join NSU? Because I plan to apply graduate program and especially master's program. And many professors focus on student research experiences. However, I didn't have a research experiences at MNSU. And last year, I sent email to professor and asked research project, but there are few research projects because of COVID. So I couldn't get last year. And also, I didn't have confidence. And in zoology and ecology class, there is no international student, and I feel nervous. And also, I afraid to take a risk because market is really comfortable place, and there are many kind of people. So 
I didn't take a risk and I didn't challenge a lot. However, I want to be a researcher and want to improve my English skill also and also want to see new world. And I'm out the person and I want to I want to go amazing nature place. And I wanted to try something big in my life. So I decided to join NSC. Oh. So that's why my experience is at UAS. So I took C kayak class and we we practiced kayaking weekend. And that is an overnight sea kayaking trip. So we brought tent and food and go to small islands and stayed at the night. But I was scared that time because the instructor said there is a bear. bear. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> and, and he gave me just small bear spray. They <laughs> 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 sleep at the night. I just was bear spray. Yes, but fortunately I didn't meet bear, so I survived. And also, I saw many wild animals like sea lions, seals, and whales. Mm -hmm. So that is my good memory. Yeah. And I also helped uh, Professor Lisa Chua. So we went to beach, and that is really beautiful beach. And we use catching net, that one. And we call starry from the samples. And also, I took big theology class, and that is three, three spines tickle bug, and it's really interesting fish because they have a spine that side, and that spine is called protection from predators. And nature is amazing, so that's one is a lake, and campus is near a lake, that's a huge lake, and we can see mountain easily, and also we can try kayaking and stand up paddle here. And there are many mountains in Juno, so I enjoyed hiking. And but right now I feel sad because there are small, there is no mountain in my case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's why the glacier and I saw huge eyes. And I cannot believe that's why it's a natural one. And Croatia is amazing, it's so beautiful. Okay. So now I talk about academic things at UAS. So I took a theology class and oceanography class and learned kind of like marine biology things. And I have never learned about marine biology at MNSU. And I also involved in two research projects. So one is a body, of, I took individual research class. And that's why my research tema is body variation of Indian harvest among different locations from Thailand, Taiwan, and Malaysia. And also I got undergraduate research assistant work in ocean oceanography lab. And so my professor and I use C kayak and put GPS data, pH, temperature, salinity, and right intensity. And we made figure, map, and table for his research. And surprisingly, I got the interest in for 2021. So yeah, I was happy. <laughs> yeah. And many friends focused on that fun things and they saw, oh, you really enjoy the exchange program. However, I got many difficulties that time. And first, I I got visa program because my host university is MNSU and home university. No, home university is MSU and host university is UAS. And in immigration policy, international students cannot work or cannot work off campus. And that situation is off campus work because my home university is the MSU. So I couldn't work as well, I couldn't work as a research assistant past several days, several months. And also I go. My grandma, grandpa, grandmother passed away because she got pancreas disease and she's really old and she's 91 years old and she couldn't get salaries. And at the same time, my mom lost, lost job. And I don't have father because my mom and father divorced. And as a kid, and she has a disability. 
in her left leg, so she can work just office work. But that's like she lost job. So my family doesn't have money, and I pay tuition, housing, etc. You to use my student loans, but I decide to use student loan to my family, so that I didn't have money to pay my housing fees, school fees. So yeah, that's what my difficulties. However, I didn't give up, and I asked to my friends and advisors, and my advisor said CPT works to me. So I applied CPT, and finally I could work at US, and also. I helped one lady because that lady got uh, hip surgery and she cannot do garden work even though she has a huge garden. So I also helped her. Then she know my situation and she paid part of my school fees also. Mm -hmm. And I applied emergency grant and I got yeah that grant from MNSU. And also I work a lot at, at UAS and finally I could pay all school fees mm -hmm. and yeah I paid, I bought yeah airplane ticket and finally I came back to yeah <laughs> my too yeah so I couldn't believe that situation and it's hard to focus on pictures my research work and my work too however I just focus on my current work and ask questions. The professor, advisor, and share my emotion to my friends. And also, I still keep trying new things and try to go many experiences. And this semester, I got four research projects and two, uh, two on campus work, but that was really easy to get because I just sent email and I just explained my, research, uh, my experiences at UAS. And I didn't get interviews that time. So my professor accepted me easy. So I was surprised. So I think it's hard to get past experiences, but next time, next experience is much easier. Mm -hmm. And uh, really important things is I didn't give up and I keep finding solution that time. That's why I could enjoy the exchange program and I really appreciate my friends and advisors. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I'm happy to, yeah, I'm happy to share my experiences to you guys. And yeah, I can answer questions. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> Questions for Masaki before we get into other NSC questions. Okay. And I'd love to hear a little bit about the classes that you were taking. Were okay. they very different? Did you find that there were lots of similarities? Um, what did you enjoy the so, most? For me, I, I think US class is amazing because sometimes we have a few trip. So there are some research in, in, institution at UAS and the, that's research institution of research about salmon or ocean fish. So I I was really angry because that's that's time we that's research institution research about I'm like inner ear or salmon. So they keep inner ear and use microscope and identify age. I have never did that same thing at MNSU. Mm -hmm. That is a different thing also. And there are many outdoor activity class like sea parking and rock climbing class also yeah snow hiking class. So yeah that's why the yeah different things. So I think kind of field work is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Classes, class quality is also yeah different. Um, uh, you mentioned like the your your bear hiking trip that was really fun. Um, yeah. what was like the best outdoor like adventure spot to go to, like a mountain or a, a lake that you I, I love? Like beach and fishing is really amazing. 
So that's one. Psycho silver salmon. <laughs> and it's over 31 inches. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised because that's time many people try to install silver salmon and I saw long line at the beach. And but it, sometimes it's hard to catch because fish fish so many lures mm -hmm. and they don't attract to get the lure. But that's time I could get to fish uh, to silver salmon and I cook smoked salmon <laughs> and <laughs> And yeah, there are and in Juno there are four salmon species. And I call that. Um, that is pink salmon, mm -hmm. but my friends say pink salmon is top food <laughs> <laughs> because you know silver salmon is uh, delicious and also king king salmon mm -hmm. also delicious. So they compare taste, but they don't want they don't want to eat pink salmon. <laughs> but in Minnesota, no. we often eat pink salmon. <laughs> 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 so taste is fine, but they compare taste. <laughs> there are many delicious food in Japan. So. <laughs> How did you decide to go to UAS with all the other marine biology? So first, I really want to study about marine biology, and also I really love nature. I don't, I don't want to go large city because uh, I don't like cloudy place. Yeah. And UAS it has a great, uh, yeah, UAS has a kind of like a great research project also. And my professor research about flat fish and as a professor research about salmon too. So this is really fit to me because I really want to research about fish. So that's why I decided. And also uh, housing fee is not expensive. I think dorm room fee is 2000. 800 for us. But if you go as a university, you have to pay $5,000 or $6,000. Or so, yeah, that's why the cheapest, cheapest housing fee, I think. So that's why. Yeah. What would be your one piece of advice for someone who's thinking about NFA? Hmm. I, I think I don't recommend to take a lot of crazy because uh, if people want to get experiences a lot, it's hard to enjoy out of class because student has a lot of assignment and they have to finish. So yeah, and also I that's time I took starting crazy and I work on campus also and also I have research projects so yeah I I couldn't enjoy a lot during the semester after semester I had time so I enjoyed I went to Croatia yeah beautiful place but yeah so maybe don't take a 18 phrases or 70 phrases. <laughs> it's Very not nice. good for mm -hmm. exchange students. Okay. Kind of open it up. Does anyone else have any like just general questions about National Student Exchange, how it works? The one thing to kind of make interest in NFC is so there's actually two kind of options when it comes to applications. Um, there's the priority placements, and then there is what called a post-con or like post-conference placement. So um, the priority placements is when all the schools of NSC have accepted no one at this point, and all the coordinators get together at a conference, and they do um, they have placement day, which is almost like a draft. So students who do NSC, they come um, talk to me as a coordinator, and we kind of put together your top five locations based on probability of getting in. So we actually look at all those what are the options for you to get in, different payment plans, and then you'll actually place at this like draft placement conference on the first week of March. But if you decide maybe I don't want to get placed like right away, I want to wait until like the middle of March, 
that's okay because a lot of about 85% of the schools that um, are part of NSC actually have room for students to do it after the placement, um, do post con um, after the placement conference too. So if you need more time, there is a couple of different options. Um, if you decide to do spring semester and then come and decide at the beginning of fall semester you want to do the next spring, there is options at that point to the beginning of semester to do some um, placements for the next semester as well. So you definitely have some options for students um, in terms of when you want to do it, um, different kind of plan plans versus on-campus housing versus off-campus housing, meal plans. So we kind of look at the whole picture, not just academically how kind of the programs for students. Um, Eligibility-wise, most schools um, do ask that students are at least at sophomore status. Um, if you are coming in um, as a freshman who has more than 15 credits and is going to be at sophomore status the second semester of their freshman year, there is some options for you to do um, NSC as well. Transfer students as well. Um, you just have to be here at campus for one semester to do NSC the next. Um, about 80 um, of the 170 schools actually accept international students. So if you're international students, there's a lot of opportunity for you also to do the National Student Exchange, explore some different areas of, of the U.S. as well. I think I mentioned that GPA-wise, most of schools require 2.5. Some do require 2.8 or 2.0, but we'll go through all kind of that based on the kind of options students are looking at. Any other questions? Um, that's all we have for today, and um, feel free to stick around and um, ask us after any other questions you guys have. Um, thank you everyone online for coming. Um, this will actually be it's actually be recorded. It'll be on our um, YouTube and our Instagram page for students who want to share it with others or go back and have any questions.